Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, Jan. I'm delighted to welcome you all to a new series I'm doing where I welcome a guest onto the show and we talk about Chelsea. Today I'm very lucky to have Eunice on and we're going to talk about the Super Cup. Eunice, how you doing bro? I'm doing very well, mate. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. How are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm happy to have you uh, as the debut guest on the show, man. And you know what? Chelsea didn't win in Istanbul, but what a performance, man. I, I mean, I sort of woke up this morning only thinking of, like, positives, really. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. We're going to chat for a little bit, shoot the shit about this stuff. But before we get into it, can I get your general, just your general big takeaways from that match? Um, I mean, well, firstly, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate being the debut guest. This <laughs> Pleasure, man. Uh, Pleasure. It's a lot. <laughs> but um, my, my general feeling is, again, positive. I don't have much negatives. I'm proud. Mm. I didn't expect the performance like, like, like we saw last night. Mm. Um, I said in my preview, I really thought that we were going to get turned over, not necessarily straight away, but second half going into the end of the game, we would get dominated. Yeah. yeah. Based on the United performance, but we didn't. We showed, we showed bottle, mm. as, as we like to say. We um, we showed. I don't like to sound like Brendan Rodgers, but we showed good character. <laughs> and <laughs> and um, yeah, overall, I just think everyone put in a shift, and that's all I asked for. Mate. Whether we lost, that's all I asked for. Yeah, I think that was, like, the theme going into this game, isn't it? Like, maximum effort, put in a performance, yeah. and just don't get turned over. Or even if you do concede a bunch, just basically look like there was something happening. And we've got a lot to talk about. We can talk about the formation personnel, but you're right. The first thing you said when I asked you that question was proud, and that... It was pride, wasn't it? That was like the context and the theme of that game. Now, yeah. Chelsea was split last season. Like, no matter how you felt about Sarri, I, as a football nerd, I quite like Sarri, but there were, he he was there to do a job and he tried to do his job and you can't critique him for that. And, you know, he did a good job, whatever. But with Frank, he will inspire. He will raise performance levels he will make players proud he will be proud of the players and he will i said in a video this morning that he will make every member of the squad all in do you know what i mean like people on the bench they won't be a bit miffed that they're not playing like they all there'll be a camaraderie there and there's so much to be said i i, I was thinking maybe less and less in football that maybe this kind of part of the game is becoming less and less important like it's all about galactico technical mercenaries from around world football that just fit in stylistically but there's so much to be said about togetherness um and that seems so so obvious with frank lampard and chelsea fans i know every fan culture thinks they're all about this sort of like us versus them culture you know but it's so you know nice to have that back and I reckon that would have done the world of good for Frank so well for Chelsea fans just the culture of being a Chelsea fan at the moment but um okay so I'm gonna ask you some questions about the game man so he yeah. went 4-3-3 and he went funnily enough Maurizio Sarri's 4-3-3 which is an interesting one but obviously there was different licenses uh, he gave license to players to do more stuff but less space between the lines he probably learned from the United game counter-attacks but how, how do you feel about that personnel and the formation and how the sort of game pl panned out because great in the first half wasn't it? It was uh, and I, I, I thought it was um, I thought it was a good decision he did say in the press conference before the game that he was going to look at the players that did get us to that stage in the first place mm. and he was going to look at you know what we've done to win the Europa League, so, you know, for us to even be in this game in the first place. Yeah. So it didn't surprise me that he went for four three three. Alternatively, a different system to what we done against United, which didn't work. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that system works or not, I believe it can work. It just didn't on the day because you know, many reasons. Yeah. But um, these players, many of these players, are flexible. They and they understand that system because they've spent a whole season playing it already. True. They understand how to how to play a four three three. Um, you know, they're familiar with it. So mm. it's good that, in terms of a final or a game that's a must win, 
it's good that he's giving um, or he's playing a way that he knows everyone is more familiar with mm. that they can work with a bit easier mm. than having to put something new altogether yeah. um, alternatively as well we did see as you said different things to, to, to Mauricio Sarri and his way of playing um, but it was nice I enjoyed it mm. and um, I think it's a good it, it's a good system to have just in case yeah. if I have an idea of implementing something different Absolutely. I can always report back to that yeah you know what you, yeah, you know what you just said there you just that really I think is this really salient point is that I was talking about how oh yeah who's going to start on the strike position oh it was Giri because you know he's top scorer in the competition uh, in, last season <clears throat> but you make the point that Frank said you know what, these players that got to that position deserve the chance to continue, therefore it makes sense to play them in said formation. But because it looked so much more secure and it gave the champions of Europe a, a torrid time, you know, often Chelsea outplayed Liverpool in that game. Do you think that's actually consequently gonna give Lampard maybe a little bit of a headache? Like, oh God, maybe I should go with this for a little while because it you know allowed Chelsea to be more compact but so I'll ask you that question and also can you answer it so apart from answering me that I'll ask you another one do you think um it's not necessarily just that it's just the fact how he, he's inspired the players so much because there's no mistakes made but the players were flawless do you think that's just systemic because they know the formation and Frank will be inclined to carry on or do you think that was the occasion and them all just raising their game after the United game and a bit of that as well what do you reckon i think yeah i think it's a bit of both yeah i think it's a bit of both i think it's, it's he's definitely got a headache now as to what he's been working on in pre-season mm. and what he's seen last night because yes. it worked mm. um as well as that yes he's he's gonna inspire players because he's played in big finals he's he's worn the t-shirt and done it and, mm. and these know it it's the same situation is like Zidane at Madrid where you know players can't really go that step further with them because they know that they're people that have gone there done it mm. and you can't really speak until you hit that level yep, so they, they've done it you haven't mm. so um he can inspire and he does inspire and um, even after the game we saw the social media posts from all the players yeah come out and saying oh, I'm proud to be part of this team and yeah. this, is, this is something we saw last season no. but Exactly. I'm hoping it's not PR. Mm. I'm hoping it's just not a uh, social media post, you yeah, know, because yeah. sake of Twitter. Yeah. But, um, but you know but what? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, you, it's just on that. You kind of get, a, when you say, I hope it's not like obligated PR that we go again. Do you know what I mean? When they get the sort of pulled string generic stuff. Because you said, when you said, in on the game, they were, they were in it. Do you know what I mean? You can tell there's like a. Um, it's almost uh, palpable, do you know what I mean? You can sense this team, this togetherness. It's not just PR, it's not just that. It's Frank Lampard, it's Jody Morris, it's the communication, it's the integration with the squad. It's the bringing the young players in and having that connectivity from already knowing them, from being the, you know, the club icons and then being the kids they brought through, as well as the senior players being well respected and raising their game because they're almost a sort of similar age and they know Frank's quality as an almost equal. It's like a, just an absolute concoction for, I don't want to say success as a whole because there's a lot of obstacles, but in terms of muse, inspiration and dedication, I feel like it's the perfect mix. So when you say like, I hope it's not PR, I feel like it's clear enough to see, to see that that it's legit but um so i want to sort of um, pick your brains and your your good chelsea mind on some other stuff um <laughs> how okay so if i can't really pick out a, like the top performers in that game because everyone played so well but um you know obviously there's pedro suddenly me thinking yeah he's probably cooked now suddenly has this an amazing performance everyone so let's talk about aspliqueta right after that United game, as Piliqueta was, oh, he's cooked, like, it's the Ivanovic thing again, he's cooked, you know, he's fallen off a cliff, but he was pretty darn immaculate defensively in that game, so I know everyone's calling for Reese James, but has that reinvigorated some of your hope for SP in the final? The, the one thing that, that's positive about SP yesterday was he started well, so he had, he had a great first half. You did, yeah. Oh, cool. mm. Second half, 
don't know what happened. Made some crucial mistakes mm. and similarly to the Man United game and I thought well, what were you doing mm. but he picked up yeah yeah yeah. that's not what I expect uh, you know if, if you look at Asby and it, it looks like he's declining it looks over time compared to what he was whereas now mm. uh you know, normally he would have a bad performance and just stay like that, or he would start off good, decline, and then just just fall. But mm. into extra time, he was playing the same way he was in the first half. And yeah. considering someone who's declining, yeah, yeah. he was of energy, he was still running. And I'm thinking, what's going on then? Do you know what personifies that Eunice as well? Uh, do you remember right before extra time, there was a coin toss again with the captains, you know, yeah. to it was Asp and Henderson, and Henderson was blowing out of his ass. he couldn't stand up, yeah. Asp was just like, what do you want, man? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. It's bizarre. Um, yeah. As well as that, and mm. just, just, you know, just to slide off really briefly. Go on. Uh, but as well as a- Asp, what about the rest of the side? If you look at just before the penalty shootout was, was about to start, mm. Both teams were in huddles. Mm. You could see the camera pan to the Chelsea lot, and they were all um, they were all shouting, raising their voices, going, "Yes, come on, boys, come on, boys!" Mm. They were hugging each other, and it just looked vibrant, like they were ready to go to war. Mm-hmm. And Liverpool, Klopp's talking, his assistants talking, physios everywhere, fin- and their players have just gone, "Yeah." yeah. And to his assistant has turned to them, going, "Well, come on then!" Yeah. And everyone's just like, "Yeah, yeah." I think that yeah. also two days extra rest for them well they should have been like you know buzzed up yeah. mm. all right something else i want to talk to you about man i've been yeah. harping all about it on my youtube video today and on twitter about Jorginho, right so i was always a fan of Jorginho because i think he's quite a modern specialist player but obviously he had his problems last season he was figured out he was given a hard time in sorry system when he found it difficult to play out of man marking that he did actually overcome towards the end. You know, there's the whole joke about the headband supercharged Jorginho when he started playing really well. You know, I watched him a few times at the bridge. I really, really liked him. Um, and you know, there's some people now critiqued him saying, oh, he's found a new life on the Lampard. I actually think he was always an excellent player. But what I want to talk to you about, Eunice, is Chelsea talk about a lack of leaders. Now, I think leaders, just because Lampard's coach now, that problem might fade away because he'll inspire leadership within the squad but you know what man I know he's not fluent in English and I feel like maybe this is be the better point when he's fluent in English but Jorginho he doesn't think he's the big I am of course he doesn't he's quite a happy-go-lucky guy but when he's on that pitch man he's aggressive in the tackle he's you know he's terminator focus he's pointing everywhere you know people have talked about it's because he was the register that he's telling people where to go that's just his way of playing, man. He's telling people that you go there, come on, we can do this. You know, Tammy misses the penalty, the first to console him. I'm getting serious captainy vibes from Jorginho. Not like, oh, he's a big, strong centre back, he should be captain, who's English. I'm getting, no, this guy's not trying to be, but there's some like natural captain attributes that just seem to be coming out of his pores that, you know, Chelsea are lacking this character. Do you think that's a bit of like a hot take for an Italian dude who's been at our club for a year? How do you feel about that? No, I think he's he's got despite um, the criticisms he received, mm. um, and obviously some of the flaws from last season, notably getting closed down because he was the only man in centre mid, and you know everything went through him. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that that's just the way it was. Yes, um, his attitude is fantastic. Yeah, second to none. His attitude is fantastic. Um, he's he's a cool guy overall. Mm. Um, he's got so much criticism. Mm. Probably on par, if not maybe slightly less, but near enough to what Morata was receiving. <laughs> That's deep as well, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Morata went away and cried and left, mm. and Jorginho has just constantly gone. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And this season, he's countless interviews, one notably after last night's game, mm. saying, I don't want to be known for coming here and being Sari's boy. I want to be known for playing at Chelsea. I want to be Chelsea, that. yeah. Lovely. And, uh, you know, he, that's that's what we want to hear. And that's the correct way to, to approach things. And mm. if that's mentality, then fantastic. Absolutely. That's how everyone should be. Mm. So um, I think there are elements of his game where, yes, he can... Um, there are elements of his game where he can improve. Mm. There are game. There are elements of his game where he's superb. Mm. Um, 
ultimately, I think with another maybe season, he can become captain. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously, I mean, even with a season, it's a tall order, but I was just sort of, just the vibes of getting from him from that. But anyway, I'm incredibly pleased about things have come along. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So there's a few other players to talk about. I mean, we could we could talk about Kante, but the only obviously he's amazing, best interceptor in world football, and best. And, you know, and now he's better at going forward. That's one thing to another thing to thank Sari for. So we could wax lyrical about uh, Kante, Eunice, and how he's obviously going to help this team out more. But I feel like it'll be a little bit of a waste of the, this particular um, show because everyone seems to know that, you know. So what I do want to talk to you about is let's go let's do some mason mount chat because frank's been coming out obviously a lot and talking about mason mount now he's been doing this the last couple of years um obviously he's very highly rated in the club but even when he was young he people were making comparisons to frank lampard now frank lampard for my money is chelsea's greatest ever player so that's not a bad comparison to be made but he has been talking him up so so much um, maybe even a bit too much in terms of like, all right, you're sort of highlighting him now that could be almost damaging. Yeah. But, and in United game, I didn't think he was that special. I feel like he was disappointing, even though Frank came out swinging, defending him. But in pre-season, when he scored those two goals, he was very, very good. And much like Pulisic in this final, when he came on, I was seriously impressed with Mason Mount. Um, when he was playing down that left flank, he was roasting Alexander Arnold, who had much fresher legs than him. And to the point where Trent pulled him down and conceded that yellow. Um, and obviously he scored that excellent goal that was ruled offside. Um, is there's a couple of good movements he makes. Um, how how do you feel about Mount? And where do you rank him, I guess, against Barkley at the moment? Because I think they'll kind of be fighting for the same spot. Yeah, they were. Um, and ultimately yesterday he came on, on, the, on the left-hand side. Mm. Um, different i didn't expect that mm. um even though he did it in pre-season it looked mount, good, didn't it? yeah he did he mm. did um he looks comfortable mm. with mount um i think he's brilliant i think for his age and what he's able to do he's class i know the comparisons are there that's something i don't think anyone's going to get rid of until when he reaches that age and then we'll finally know if he is on lamb's level we yeah, yeah. won't know but yeah. then again he's his own player he, he shouldn't be stuck in Lamps's shadow because Lamps wasn't stuck under anyone's shadow you know, he's got a bad man yeah that's a good point um, at the same time Lampard when Lampard was coming up and he was 17 or 18 um, and there was a little bit of criticism and Harry Redknapp backed him yeah iconic right do you remember yeah mm. Lamps didn't have this big limelight over him he was mm. just let to get on with it Mount has this limelight over him, and as you said, I'm worried that could end up becoming damaging. Mm. I don't want it to be damaging, and I know Chelsea fans in general, I don't think are going to hound him. Mm. One will support him, and everyone knows what he's able to do. Mm. I just hope that elsewhere, that pressure isn't going to come from elsewhere, where he's got to perform now, he's got to perform now. He's young, you've yeah. got to give him a couple of years at least. Let him, sure. let him get on with it. Yeah. He can be a top, top player, he's got a good composure. We saw the penalty that he took yesterday in the shootout. Oh, that was my favourite one. At his age, uh, at that level, with that much pressure, to do that. Yeah, ice uh, cold. Yeah, that is shows of Frank Lampard. And you know, pressure can be damaging because you remember when Loftus Cheek was like the golden boy of the academy. Um, even yeah. though, even though stylistically he's different to Lampard, he I think pressure hurt him as well as perhaps Mourinho's the way he dealt with him. But um. I'm like a Loftus Cheek super fan. I think he can. He's like a big. He's like a sort of Anthony Joshua version. No, he's like an Anthony Joshua B Tech Eden Hazard. <laughs> so like he can, he can dribble like almost like Hazard when he's got the ball and moves around, and he can score this. He can curl the ball in the top corner like Hazard, but he looks a bit like AJ, and he just bowls through midfield and people bounce off him. And I think Loftus Cheek will be a big big player for us. Fortunately, he's very, very different to Mason Mount and they won't be fighting for the same place. It's kind of really Mount and Barkley. And I feel like just because of um, uh, Mason Mount, the hype behind him and how he's, you know, Lampard's surrogate son, apparently, he might win that battle. Um, let's spend a little bit of time on um, Tammy Abraham. Uh, obviously, he scored a couple of goals in pre-season. I think one penalty, one an open play. Uh, he's shown flashes of good moments where he makes the correct run 
obviously his application is second to none in terms of always pressing. Uh, I think he's looked really a lot better when he's played in a two, when his pressing has a strike partner to, to block off an extra channel with him rather than the lone striker. Um, but then again, there's, there's moments where I think it was Barkley in the final where Barkley was carrying the ball up against two defenders and Tammy was making a run, but he was making the complete wrong run. He could have used the run to bring a couple away and Barkley could have either played to him or got the space to shoot and he actually ruins the attacking phase um, and obviously the heartbreaking penalty. So he's the number nine. Uh, he's young. He's obviously used to scoring goals, which is a huge bonus at whatever level. If you're used to scoring goals against decent big centre-backs and you're only 21, he's only got over 50 first-team goals at 21. That's good. And he's Chelsea. He wants to play for Chelsea. He knows what it means to play for Chelsea. And he's won at youth level for Chelsea. It, Eunice, is he good enough for Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> you, you wrapped that up brilliantly. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Cheers. Now you can answer a really hard question. <laughs> <laughs> he he's not the finished article yeah diplomatic yes. I like it I, I I trust him yeah yeah that's good mm. he's uh he's got he, he needs time Th these young players are not gonna be even by the end of the season they're not gonna be you know banging in 30 goals a season that's not gonna be the case so if mm. people are expecting that yeah. they need to pipe down a little bit yeah of course uh, there's something that's probably a work in progress for at least another at least into next season Mm. Uh, and these these players need confidence, time, the ability to find their way, um, and ultimately he's come up he's come up to a, a new level. He was at Villa, mm. killed it in the Championship. This is Chelsea, mm. top six Premier League, mm. Champions League. This is another and it's another story. Mm. So there's mistakes that he's gonna make because of experience and mm. hence them being the run that he should have made yeah that is gonna come with experience that's mm. that's simple you know it's, it's a new way of playing he's got new teammates the chemistry isn't gonna click straight away that's mm. gonna take it. once that does come but we making the right runs because midfielders will understand him yeah he'll un he'll, he'll understand his midfielders behind him mm. he'll be click yeah. um as well as that yes playing alone playing with a two um, someone alongside him, which I think benefits him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 a matter of time. Mm. I think it's a matter of time. I just need to put that trust and that faith that he can make it. Mm. And uh, he believes that he can make it. And I believe he will. The same way that Loftus Sheik has gone, Hudson Odoi has gone, I believe he'll go in the same direction. Brilliant. I tell you what, it's a really good point well made about you know being realistic and developing with the team. And you know what I think acts as a catalyst to develop appropriately with the team is this camaraderie, is this new coach who believes in him. He's got the backing, isn't he? Um, you know, he missed that penalty. It wasn't one or two guys going chin up. It was everyone was in together saying, no, he's our boy, you know? And it, it's it's kind of like, it is, because I thought, you know, Tammy's staying at Chelsea. Maybe he's going to be the third striker, but no, nope, they gave him the number nine. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, it's all in. But... Um, so again, I don't want to talk about Giroud because for me he's kind of like the Kante subject. I'm not saying he's the best striker in the world, like maybe Kante is the best interceptor, but Giroud's very, very good. He's a known quality. We know what he brings to the team. So, Eunice, let me ask you another direct, difficult question. Why does no coach fancy fancy Batshuayi? I don't know. Because he's a finisher. I, well, exactly. Like yesterday, if 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 we're talking it on the concept of a final and a trophy that we have to win today mm. within 90 minutes if you're taking Giroud off Batshuayi is the man to come on exactly he'll score a clutch goal that will win you a trophy <laughs> and that's why I, I was baffled when when Tammy came on I thought huh yeah 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 it's what I understand it's good exposure it's yeah. great experience yeah 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 but yeah. It, it depends what your goal is are you looking to give players experience or are you looking to actually win the trophy you know as in like guaranteed win the trophy mm -hmm. or is it not that much of a big deal because it, it would like, it, it's yeah. not well no you're right but i was the same as you because it's no to bring on batchway there it's no slight on tammy tammy can still be your starting number nine in all your general yeah. league games with your new yeah. approach you know your new approach but you'd like you say you need a goal you need a sniffer in the box how about a guy who's three or four years older who scored goals in loads of different leagues around Europe and he scored league winning goals, he scored away 
at, in the Wanda Metropolitano. You know, so that's a weird one. So I think that's a weird, like, no one's going to really figure out the Batshuayi thing. Um, I feel like maybe something behind Glow. There's a, there's a theory that he's really slow in training in terms of between the years and maybe he doesn't retain tactical information, but still, like you say, throw him in to try and sniff a goal. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we've, we've, we've talked a little while before about the final, so uh, just if we if we wind it down with a few more minutes, Eunice, let's talk about, while I've got you on the show, um, Leicester. Frank Lampard's home debut in the league. How do you think it might go? I'm expecting a win. Good start. Um, uh, the bridge is going to be buzzing. Like, it's Lamps coming home. Yeah. Ultimate, why the ticket sold out in I, I think like record time or mm. something with just let just that game like yeah, yeah. games are normal but this game against Leicester it's everything just sold out really quickly mm. um, people still trying to get tickets now mm. it's gonna be buzzing it's good I think similar to when Jose came back the second time yeah against the bridge was pumping mm. and we're gonna see that on Sunday so I don't think Leicester are gonna handle it and if they do I think it'll just be a matter of our players switching off or, again, individual mistakes, um, unforced errors, little things. Mm. I think um, the spirit is there. We seem to have found a way, at least, to play, to play against Liverpool. I think if we go in, the, in, a, in a similar direction, just to try and get some momentum, we'll beat Leicester, mm. I reckon. So I'm, I'm confident. You're confident, yeah. On the, the atmosphere, I was at the bridge when Frank brought his Derby team over and that was a surreal situation because ev- everyone was chanting his name, the home and away fans, and it was, a, it was peculiar, but it was, you know, it was excellent. Um, what formation do you think he's going to play against Leicester? Um, I, I, I'd like to say that he's going to stick with the 4-3-3. Mm. Technical difficulties, everyone. We're in a disconnect, but we're back here with Eunice. Eunice was just telling me how he thinks the Leicester game is going to go, so continue, mate. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I, th- I think he'll go. I think he'll go with a four-three-three. Yeah. Obviously, it's a system that we've seen close to working, at least compared to the Man United game, and it's it's all that he has in terms of exposure and what what he's seen. So yeah. yeah. I guess he'll go with that, and if there isn't, if there is an alternative, he'll choose. It's got to be the four-two-three-one because that's just his. That's what he came to Chelsea thinking he'll, he really he'll implement. Wants it, doesn't it? He really wants that formation to work. Um, and it can. Mm. And I think against lower opposition, that's where you do have the chance to experiment, mm. try and make that work, mm. especially with, with a with a two-man pivot, and then kind of like separating the team into two halves, where you got five who attack and five who defend mm. maybe against no opposition that can work yeah. but yeah not just... Leicester though <laughs> well exactly um, because they're going to so... they're going to counter attack like Man United do because Jamie Vardy playing on the shoulder Rashford you know yeah so, so um, I think a similar concept to the Liverpool game mm. we'll see over the line alright okay or two com- comfortably alright and before, before we wrap up the show mate um, give me a score prediction for the Leicester game um, I'm gonna go with a two 0 win. Two 0 good, good. lovely clean sheet. Take that all day long. Yeah, I'm gonna go for. I reckon three two. I reckon they will score goals because Leicester are an excellent team and will be shaky, but they're just they're, even though there'll be problems in the performance, I think the atmosphere and the quality of Chelsea will score more goals. But you know, it's a growing experience, mate. Thank you so much for coming on this new show that I might get a name for eventually. But um, right right now it's the Football Therapy Something Show, Yannick and Eunice <laughs> on the debut. <laughs> um, everyone, go check out Eunice's um, YouTube channel. As you can see on the overlay, it's below the name of his channel. So go check it out. And um, thank you so much for coming on, mate. Hey, thank you for having me, man. It's been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. So... Well, Definitely against me. Defo. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I laugh me, baby.